everybody, it's Kimmy from Scrap Therapy. Hey, I wanted to show you a really cool technique using some school glue and a spatula and a bunch of different Tim Holtz Distress inks. So, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a plain piece of white cardstock and I'm going to take my fossilized amber and here's a little tip. I like to take the little circle foam sponges, put a Velcro sticky on the back of my ink pad. I just got these stick, these Velcro pieces from the dollar store and I put them on the back of each of my ink pads and then that way I can keep the foam with it and then I don't have to own 40 different handles. I can own like six or seven and then the little piece sticks to the back. When I want to use it, I take it off, put it onto my handle and now I'm ready to go. So for this first layer, I'm going to use fossilized amber and I'm also going to use hickory smoke. So I'm going to just take that off. There we go. All right, so for the, the first layer, you're going to take and load your foam tool just with some nice circular motion into the ink pad. And then I'm going to always start on the outside edge and move inwards and come in with some really soft, gentle, circular motions. Now what I don't want is a tunnel effect with the ink kind of coming in, in in stripes. I want it to be soft. I've got ink on my finger. <laughs> I want it to be soft and so I want to be kind of random coming in all over the place but always starting on the outside edge and then moving in towards the middle with my color. So then I'm going to take the second color which is Hickory Smoke and do the exact same thing and start on the outside edge and come in with my ink color. Sorry if the camera is shaking. I am uh, just my little circular motion is really shaking the camera. So you can see some of the circular motion, um, some of the ink that's left behind, but because I'm starting on the outside edge, it softens it so that we don't get this real polka dot splotchy look. We don't want really sharp defined ink splotches. We want it to be very soft as we do this. And you can overlap a little bit and go from the, the gray to the yellow and back and forth. Okay. So then at this point, what I would do is now add the glue. So I'm just using school glue, just regular old school glue. I'm going to take, put some onto my splat mat. Okay, then I'm going to take my spatula and just add a little bit to the bottom of my spatula, just kind of tapping that on. I'm hoping that you can see that. And then I'm going to make it almost like I'm buttering a, a piece of bread and just slap that glue on back and forth. And you want to cover probably 60 to 70% of the base paper with the glue. Need a bit more glue. And you're just kind of slapping it on back and forth, back and forth. So I'm hoping the glare of the lights you can kind of see some of the glue that's on there. So see how I've got lots of coverage, but it's not over covered. Now I can kind of see right in here, there's not enough glue. So I can go back right now and just slap some on. You want it to be pretty thin. You don't want a super thick layer, but again, you don't want it too thin because then you won't get this technique that you're looking for. So I'm hoping that's showing up for you. Okay, so then you're going to set that aside and let that dry. And I've already done that. So I've done this one and I've got the glue on there and it's dry. So you can't see the glue right now because it just dries clear. But I'm going to now take two different contrast colors and I'm going to take Mermaid Lagoon, which is a beautiful color, and also Dusty Concord. And I haven't done this combination before so I hope it works <laughs> we'll see what it's gonna look like 
So I'm going to put my dusty concord over here. So I'm going to just load up my ink onto my sponge tool. And then again, starting on the outside edge, just start to add some of the ink. So you can see already the resist that's happening. See right here, see the resist that's happening between the paper and the glue. And that's the, the look that we want. So now when you go over top with your next two colors, you don't want to go over the exact same place as your first color. So what I mean is see where the yellow is? I'm not going to take the dusty concord and only put it on the yellow spots. I want to make sure the dusty concord goes on to some of the gray and some of the yellow. So the more ink that you add, starting on the outside edge again and coming in, the more you're going to be able to see the resist of the glue. You can see in here, look how beautiful that looks. Now I'm going to take some of the Mermaid Lagoon and do the exact same thing. Mermaid Lagoon is a really bold color. Well, you can see how it just grabs and takes over, but look at all that glue and the resist that's happening. So the, the first color, the yellow and the gray, um, hold a bit of their color as we add a second color on top. Start on the outside edge again and work your way in so that uh, you don't get splotches in the middle. The second layer of ink is always easier because the glue just helps things to, to be more smooth and move around. And you don't prep the cardstock at all before you start. It's just regular cardstock that you use. So I'm going to go back to the Dusty Concord and just add a little bit more in here, just a little bit. Leave some of the, I'm going to leave some of that yellow shining through. But isn't that just a beautiful piece of paper? just with Distress Inks and glue. So I wanted to show you a few things that I've done with it. Let me just put my paper up there so that I cover my glue. So on this layout that I have here, I did this layout using the Fossilized Amber in behind and the Hickory Smoke. And then I went over top with Mowed Lawn and also the uh, Mermaid Lagoon, which is this color in here. I also stamped my flowers with Stays On Ink, and then I went over top with Worn Lipstick and a bit of Victorian Velvet and some Fired Brick. And you can see how the pink colors go kind of um, a peachy coral color because of the yellow ink that was on the first layer. It gives it that um, blending and that resist. But you can see all the color and the variance, and that's because of the glue. Let me also show you this one that I did for fall. And this time I used Walnut Stain and Frayed Burlap as my background. And then I added Rusty Hinge, sorry I can't find it, <laughs> Rusty Hinge and some mowed lawn and some fossilized amber on top just to get all of these rich colors uh, for my background. And you can see how the glue just gives the resist, right, and the orange comes up on top of, of the yellow. And the last one I wanted to show you was an art journal page that I did. and. I did this one using again the gray fossilized uh, amber, or sorry, gray smoky hickory smoke color. And now I've lost my, there it is, fossilized amber. And then for this one, I went over top with Broken China and Mermaid Lagoon. So the Broken China is in the center here and the Mermaid Lagoon is more on the outside. And just by blending these four colors together, you get these green and light gray and yellow tones. And then for the flower poppies, I did Victorian Velvet and Aged Mahogany. So I hope you are inspired by this really cool technique. There's so many things you can do with it from art journal pages to scrapbook layouts to cards. Super fun way just to use your Distress inks and some school glue. 
Hope you're inspired. Have a great day.